Good morning, church. So glad you could join us for today's worship from Jarvis Garnet Pastoral Charge and the Nanticoke Pastoral Charge. And may I say, Happy Father's Day. Let us begin worship. Gladden the souls of all your servants, O God. To, to you, O Lord, we lift up our hearts. The Lord is good and forgiving, abounding on steadfast love. Listen to our cries, O God, and answer. God is great and does wondrous things. So we come to worship and bow down before you. Let us glorify God's name together. Let us pray. God of grace, you created our minds to grow in wisdom. You created our hearts to expand with love for you and your world. You created our voices to sing your praises forever. Fill us to overflowing with the Holy Spirit so we may worship you in spirit and truth, bold and unafraid to follow you. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Bible reading today is taken from the New Revised Standard Version, the Gospel of Matthew. And today I'm reading chapter 10, verses 24 through 39. A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light. And what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from the father. And even the hairs of your head are counted. So do not be afraid, for you are of more value than the sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set man against father and daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. For who find their life will lose it, and those who love lose their life for my sake will find it. Well, the disciples have been on a journey with Jesus, and he has just shared with them some of the mission to, what, to which they are being called. And then he begins to tell them what might happen next. It was Jesus' way of preparing them to expect the unexpected. Jesus warned his followers that they needed to be prepared, be prepared for rejection and to face prosecution because he will, they will be labeled as his followers. This passage opens with clear warnings and guidelines for the disciples. They're to share what Jesus shared, what they're learning. There won't always be a glorious reception, so they must also be prepared for suffering. Dietrich Bornhofer was a minister in Germany during the rise of Adolf Hitler. He was one of the few ministers in Germany who stood up to the dictator and could see through Hitler's rhetoric. In 1937, he wrote The Cost of Discipleship, a powerful book that paints a picture of what it means to follow Jesus Christ. He says, such grace is costly because it calls us to follow. And it is grace because it calls us to follow Jesus Christ. It is costly because it costs a man his life. 
and it is grace because it gives a man the only true one the only true life sorry it is costly because it condemns sin and it is and it's grace because it justifies the sinner above all it is costly because it cost god the life of his son you were bought at a price and what it cost what it cost god much cannot be cheap for us above all it is grace because god did not reckon his son too dear a price to pay for our lives but delivered him up for us costly grace is the incarnation of god as the disciples proclaim the kingdom of heaven coming near they are also told that they must remain focused on the mission and do what they are supposed to do it means transitioning into a commonly difficult portion of the passage beginning in matthew 10 34 to 36, Jesus recites a familiar passage from Micah 7, where God and the prophet are exchanging, engaged in an exchange about being faithful in their relationship and unfaithfulness in the community. When the people challenge the status quo, they're often labeled as being unfaithful to what has become the way of life. Jesus seems to be telling them that he didn't come to keep the peace or harmony with what's happening in their lives of faith, that he came to shake things up and invite followers to new ways of life, the kingdom of heaven here and now. Betrayal in relationships is nothing new. A person blindly following someone else's path to avoid stress in a relationship is nothing new. So Jesus helps the disciples understand that following him is about being liberated from the expectations of others, and they are being grounded in what God wishes. Faith is about discovery, not simply defending positions and defining people. Jesus then clearly defines what the expectation is for the life of a disciple. Notice that Jesus does not say to love someone instead of him but to love no one more than you love him. The expectations are stated in a value and degrees, not in estrangement. It's about loving more rather than instead of, or in place of, whatever relationships we have. According to Jesus, following him means we can't set aside the gospel for another relationship. We find hope in the reality that God will never betray us. Our value is immeasurable by God, and God's fidelity to us is always promised. And it is in that relationship that we can lose our life. Thanks be to God. Would you bow your head and pray with me? God of compassion and courage, in our weakness you are strength. In our darkness you are light. In our sorrows, you are comfort and peace. Embrace each situation we remember in our prayers this day with your steadfast love. We thank you for moments of joy that still break into our lives, even in the strange times of pandemic and reopening of our communities. For love given and received. For friends who furnish our life with meaning and happiness for family who embraces us with love and understanding. And we thank you for all the caring and faithful fathers celebrated this day. Remembering those fathers who have died and praying for those fathers cut off from their family. God of all nations, we pray for our country and countries around this world so deeply affected by COVID-19. Guide leaders to make wise decisions about reopening communities and give patience and courage to those whose lives have been disrupted, especially those who fear what the future holds. Whenever injustice rules and misinformation confuses, protect the vulnerable and shine the light of your truth to reveal the path to justice and renewed hope. God of compassion, 
We pray for peace to prevail in places torn by war. We ask that respect for human life will grow wherever people are abused or scorned. We pray for all those who are suffering and for all who mourn a significant loss. Surround them with your love and support them with the strength of your spirit and open our eyes to see how we might bring comfort to those who are hurting. Eternal God, you hold the dead as well as the living in your tender care. We thank you for your people in every age who have entered into your heavenly presence, especially those dear to our own hearts. Keep us in communion with them and bring us to dwell with them at the last in your everlasting light. Hear us as we offer prayers in silence for the other concerns on our hearts this day. And now, let us join our voices together, praying the words that Jesus taught. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. My friends, God has given you all that you need as you reach out in love to care for others. So go into God's world, bringing the good news of redemption and hope. In Jesus' name, go in peace, and may the God of peace go with you always. Amen. <laughs>